Hello. In this video, I want to teach you how to calculate the power being used by a particular element of an electric circuit. But before I do that, I need to review a couple things. So first, I want to talk about voltage, which in equations has the symbol V. Voltage measures the amount of energy that a charge has when you put it at a particular location in space. We measure it with the units volts. And one volt is technically defined as one joule per one coulomb. So what this means is that voltage, it measures the amount of energy that a single charge would have if you put it somewhere. For example, let's say that this is the entire universe. It's blank and it's boring. But I take three different parts of the universe and I measure the voltages in those parts. The first part has three volts, the second part has two volts, and the last part has one volt. This means that if I take one coulomb of charge, so some ball with one unit of charge on it, and I put it into the three volt area, that one coulomb is going to have three joules of electrical potential energy. So if I take this charge and I move it to a different region of space, some other place, maybe I move it to the right a little bit, into this box that has two volts, that means that this charge would have two joules of electrical potential energy. It has one less when you put it somewhere else. Finally, if you take it and you slide it to a third location, where there's, say, one volt, it would have one joule of electrical potential energy at that point. Voltage is interesting, um, the voltage of one point, but it doesn't really matter. What matters is the difference in voltage between different points. So the voltage drop, it measures the difference in voltage between different points. Maybe if I take a charge here and here, they're going to have different amounts of energy. Basically, it'll tell you the amount of electric energy that a charge loses when it moves between those points. So for example, let's say I have a wire. And on the left side of the wire, I measure 3 volts. And on the right side of the wire, I measure 1 volt. So on the left side, there's 3 volts. On the right side, there's 1 volt. That means that there are different amounts of energy that a charge would have on the left and on the right. And it would mean that the wire, if I move an electric charge through the wire, it will experience a voltage drop of 2 volts. So therefore, and this is the important part, if I have an electric charge that's 1 coulomb and I put it on the left, it has 3 joules of energy. But if I had one on the right, it would have 1 joule of energy. So therefore, energy is not created or destroyed. That means when the charge moves through the wire, it has three joules, but now it has one joule. The voltage drop causes two joules of energy to be released. Basically, this wire took the energy that was in the charge, the electrical energy, and it turned it into something else. Maybe it turned it into light or heat or motion. Next, I'm going to talk about current, which in mathematical formulas has the symbol I. It's a capital I, so it looks kind of like an L. Current is a measurement of the amount of electric charge moving through a point in a second. On the left, I have a low current wire, and on the right, I have a high current wire. Current measures how quickly the charges move through. It's technically measured in a unit called amperes, which is shortened to amps, and one ampere is one coulomb of charge moving by every single second. This means that amps, it measures the number of charges that flow by a point in a second. So finally, power. The symbol in formulas is a capital P. Energy is never created or destroyed. It just moves around or changes form. And power is a measurement of how quickly that energy moves around, how quickly an object can release its energy. Technically, power is measured in a unit called watts. And one watt is one joule of energy being released every second. So as a quick illustration, a light bulb can actually release the same amount of energy as a grenade can. This specifically is a Russian F1 grenade they used it in World War II, and it used about 60 grams of TNT. If you do the calculations, you can figure out that that holds about 251,000 joules of energy. A simple 1 watt light bulb that you run continuously for three days straight uses the same amount, about 251,000 joules of energy. The difference is the time that it takes to release the energy. So a light bulb will release this in three days, which is about 259,000 seconds, and the grenade releases the same amount of energy in 0 0.005 seconds, way, way, way shorter. It's actually about 50 million times faster. It's 50 million times more powerful at releasing the energy. So even though the light bulb and the grenade release the same amount of energy, the light bulb releases it slowly, so it has low power, and the grenade releases it quickly, so it has high power. That's done with the review. This is new stuff now. 
So let's say that this is a circuit that I have. I have a 12 volt battery stuck to a four ohm resistor. The electricity is flowing through it, and I want to know how powerful is this resistor? Well, to do that first, I need a couple things. I need the voltage, I need the resistance, which I have, but I also need the current. So let me calculate that really quick. We know that V equals IR, that's Ohm's law. Voltage is current times resistance. So the voltage is 12 volts. The current's what I want to find. The resistance is four ohms. You do the math and you figure out that there are three amps of current flowing through this circuit. And I'll just summarize that information like this so I don't have to have that picture up here. This is a 12 volt battery stuck to a four ohm resistor releasing three amps of current. So the resistor is called a resistor, remember, because it takes the energy away from the charges that move through the circuit. There's a voltage drop across it. But how fast is the resistor taking this energy? This isn't a pointless question. I want to know how powerful it is. Is it harmless, like a light bulb? Maybe this resistor is just shooting out a little bit of heat and light. Or is it dangerous, like a grenade? Or maybe it's like an electrical fire. It's taking too much energy per second, and that energy is going to get released as dangerous heat, and it'll burn down your house. This is finally the point. How do we calculate how powerful a particular resistor is? How much energy it's releasing every single second? So, it turns out the formula is that power equals current times voltage, or symbolically, P equals I times V. Let me tell you why power equals current times voltage, though. It's not random, it makes sense. So current is measured in amps, and voltage is measured in volts. So this and this are the same. Remember that an ampere measures how many coulombs pass by per second, and a volt measures how much energy every single coulomb has. If I do this, I'm multiplying and dividing by the amount of coulombs, the amount of charge. So if I multiply and divide by the same number, it goes away, it cancels. And so what happens is volts times current ends up being the same as joules per second, which is the same as watts, which is the unit of power. So that's why it works out. Let me show you how to use it. Power equals current times voltage. So if I have this particular circuit with 12 volt battery stuck to a four ohm resistor and three amps of current, I would just look at the current and the voltage. None of the other stuff matters. The current is 3 amps, the voltage is 12 volts, so 3 times 12 is 36. So in this particular case, the power is 36 watts. It's much closer to a light bulb than it is to a grenade, and this is probably a safe machine to build. There are two more equations for power, but they're basically the same thing. I take the power equation, power equals current times voltage, and I combine it with Ohm's law, which says that the voltage drop across a resistor is equal to the current times the resistance. So. This is Ohm's law. I can actually rearrange it by dividing both sides by the resistance, and I get this. This is the power law that I just told you. If I take V equals IR, and I plug it into this formula, and I replace voltage, I get P equals I times IR, or power equals the current times the current times the resistance. And then current times current, that's current squared. So on the right, I have one of the formulas for power that I could use by combining these equations. So I could do the same thing with the other version of Ohm's law, meaning that I could take this I and use Ohm's law to replace it with this. And so I would end up with power equals V over R, which is the same as I times V. And you can simplify that. It's voltage squared over the resistance. You don't need to know how to derive any of those. I just wanted to mention it. So this is the summary page. There are three equations we have that we can use to calculate the power of a circuit. Power equals current times voltage power equals current squared times resistance, and then power equals voltage squared over resistance. This is the same thing, but not in symbols, it's in words, that's what I just said. If you can look at a circuit, plug in numbers, and do the calculations, then you should be able to do this. I hope that was helpful.